Welcome back, folks. Level up Royal here. Joker plays here. We're doing a dual video today to show off this amazing adventure park. Yes, we are. And I'm going to go ahead and park this roller coaster back here in the station. It's probably a good starting point. Yeah, this is a good place. Yeah, I mean, it just wouldn't be a good theme park, you know, if there wasn't a big long line you had waited, you know, to get on there. Of ride. course, of course. So this time I decided to make one side with no lines, you know, for the leisurely theme parker. That's the VIP side, right? Yeah, fast pass, baby. Fast pass. Wait, is that copyright? I don't know. All right, so welcome to, what are we calling this place? Lego Fortnite Land? Have we nailed that down yet? Uh, I we had like several names. We did, yeah. Uh, bottom line, it's an adventure park for all of us, isn't it? It's always an adventure. Of course, every adventure park is always good to start off to get a nice healthy meal. I'm gonna place my order here. Yeah, man, them deer burger bills, they're pretty cool. I need to pay for it, hang on. All right, so start off, we get to get a good meal, have a seat, check out some of the park. So I see it right out there in the distance here. I think that's the silver bullet, right? That is the silver bullet. What was your inspiration for that one? Like, where do you even start? So like, you know, you and I started playing survival. You know, survival is fun, don't get me wrong, I love it. You know, we, we put, what, 500 hours into that or something? Mm -hmm. Um. But I don't know, I just kept running into this issue where I wanted to experiment with different builds and it just became too tedious in survival, you know, running out just constantly refarming, especially that flex wood for the tire stuff. Um, it was just too labor intensive to keep doing experimentation in there. So I came over here to a uh, creative or sandbox as they call it. So yeah, I just came over here honestly to get the monorail working. Uh, once I got a good working monorail, I you know went back to the other map, built it in the survival. It was awesome. But then I wasn't done there. I wanted to, to be able to turn, you know, just do all sorts of other different types of stuff. And that's where the, the, the sandbox mode here really just took off. My brain started exploding. So then I was like, well, maybe I can make a roller coaster, you know? Who cares about monorails? Let's do a roller coaster. At some point, I wanted to know just how steep could I make the roller coaster track go like how steep could i make it where the carriage would still get up there you know and not cause problems etc and uh it worked beautifully on this grade i was like wait just a minute so anyway um of course i can't show this on video right now i've already tore it all down but i actually made this track just going straight up into space there and yeah the freaking coaster went up there i was like no freaking way and then you know that i did just exploded in my brain wait a minute loop to loop so from there, I just started building builds backwards and the coaster went up there. And as I started kind of tightening the curve, the coaster that I had designed at the time started getting stuck. So I had to kind of rebuild that. I'll show you that here in a minute. But yeah, I finally got it to where it went all the way around that freaking loop. And uh, funny thing was this wasn't finished. Like I didn't anticipate it working. So the track actually ended right about here where I'm standing. And that carriage, when it actually went through the loop, it just flew right off the track, right into the water. It was a great time. How funny. So you mm -hmm. have successfully built a full 360 looping suspended roller coaster. Heck yeah. You want to ride it? Let's, let's go for it. all these freaking ramp tires I had to put down. You just pushed me out of the way. You know, <laughs> when the ride's popular. It's a lot of freaking ramp tires, but you know, every time I, I tried to repark it, I had a, you know, a hard time parking it to where it would be right in this area. It would either be like in the launch tube somewhere or, would, you know, hit the, the sidewall here and just explode. But I figured if I put all these tires down, it would cushion it just enough and it did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, it's a good time. A Ferris wheel one next. This is one that I had built. 
So this was where we started really experimenting with different mechanics, trying to figure out how to rotate things in different directions. Um, this was kind of a unique build, had different design ideas from you know, start to finish to what you've seen here. Uh, so in the end, because of the shape, what it looks like, we've actually dubbed this the Egg Beater. So, the Egg Beater is a perfect name, by the way, especially when you see it in motion. So you have a seat, and then you can uh, activate the switch. Yeah, buddy. The awesome thing is the gondolas stay you know, level-ish. Uh, it, it acts like an actual ride would act. So it stays level, but it still kind of swings around a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of fun. A little noisy, but who cares? You know, the, the mechanics in this game was never designed to do what we are doing. So on this ride, we, we also had kind of a seat, seating area. This was kind of neat because you can, you know, during the daytime, see the park. Uh, various views from here. You get to see the silver bullet launch. So if you're Actually, sitting here at the table, you can see it. You want to go ahead and hang out there and I'll go ahead and fire it up? Sure. We can see an amazing view of the silver bullet launching out. For those of you who like Too Fast and Too Furious, fire it up! So how did you brainchild this mechanism with the tires and the builds around it? Because I know we were both thinking about different carnival rides. Yeah. But honestly, bro, I didn't know where to start with this mechanism. Yeah, the, I, I went through several different iterations before I came up with this idea here. Uh, basically, you had two wheels facing each other, different sizes, trying to get it right, and then finally settled with a design that I could essentially build around it. Um, and then float different pieces through it and that's that's what gave the basic idea a basic function so this sure. this elevator actually takes us to the next ride so this right here uh, I, I really experimented with this in my survival world to begin with and then it, it got to be a lot so I uh, ended up building this version in here and making it pretty grandiose once I found out that there were multiple story ferris wheels out there or merry-go-rounds uh, I decided to build the same thing kind of mimic the idea of a two-story ferris wheel or, or merry-go-round and here we are So this mechanism was a little bit unique as well. So this has a center shaft that rotates in between several sets of tires. And that's what keeps the whole mechanism stationary and running smooth. Ah, yes, this is our pirate ship ride. Yeah, this is one of our first builds. And the thing I liked about this one was the way you decorated it. like. For an early build, you know, you didn't have to know this was going to be a theme park. You could just take one look at this and know exactly what, what direction this was all headed. And what did you name this one? Uh, the Pirate Ship Ride. <laughs> the Pirate Ship Ride. Yep. So now you got to go through here, which is a nice big long line because I anticipate everybody's going to want to ride this ride. Yeah, man, I mean, what fun is an amusement park without lines? 
So I liked the idea of wiring a build through the ground. And I mean, it didn't go underground per se, but it could have. Um, right over here, down the stairs and back over to the, the ride build. So it's really cool to be able to do that. So in other words, you can have like a ride operator controlling it, but then the rider also has its own controls. And so what did you call this thing again? It has the mo most amazing name. The Flaming Llama. The Flaming Llama. I'm going to demonstrate that triple speed. So basically channels 1, 2, and 3 are in order. You know, channel 1 is... Um, wrong button. Channel 1 is slow speed. Channel 2 is middle speed. Channel 3 is high speed. No relation. Yeah, the nice thing is everything on this park is fully functional. Heck yeah. So. so this bridge here, we needed a way to get across from one side to the other. And the original intent was for a motorway. So, you know, I widened it. But we're not sure now if we're going to do that idea anymore. You know, options are open. But long story short, you know, one way or another, whether it served a motorway or just a footbridge, I wanted it to be theme parky. Mm -hmm. So I know it costed some extra builds doing this. But um, not only does it serve as a possible, you know, motorway slash footbridge, but the, the raft ride, which we haven't shown yet, is going to go right through and under this. And there's some, like, visuals that are a part of the build as well. So it's not just a bridge. It's kind of like a multi-purpose structure. So we take the bridge and then we crumb over here and we get our first glimpse of the two different race tracks associated with this side of the park. So straight ahead is, is our full-blown go-kart park. Uh, just completed our video recording for all of this today, so that video is going to launch here very, very soon. But you can see this, this was a good collaboration uh, between both uh, Lura and I. I. I started with building the track here on the bottom have angle builds in place as well you know I, I started with this kind of bridge idea to come on over uh, you you logged in you found a different way to kind of Make it a little bit low profile, make it more suiting to the go-kart environment. Then I noticed that uh, you had put in some bleachers. These came oh, out yeah. excellent. So it yeah, really it gives did. to the whole feel, feel the whole racetrack. Then, of course, you've got the observation posts here for judging and whatnot. these go-karts uh, simple design uh, we added a booster just for some fun and they're actually real fun to drive real real fun yes they are that's gonna be a fun video so make sure you check out Joker plays channel for that one what theme park these things are awesome yeah what theme park is not you know I mean, you get you gotta have bumper cars, right? It, it's not a theme park unless you have one, right? Okay, so there's bumper cars, and then there's a no kidding, legitimate looking bumper car arena that if you probably just showed at a quick glance, somebody would think it was just a bumper car arena. They wouldn't even know it was Legos.
The, the cars were kept simple. This design really only works in sandbox mode. Um, it's simplified in sandbox mode. You're, you're not required to, to have the actual battery pack on them. So we can right. simplify the carts, make them smaller, so on and so forth, so that, you know, essentially they could, they could be more functional. We, we had several right. different designs of these carts. Um, from very yeah, big between the two of us, man, we had some funny ass looking. Oh cars. yeah, we we had some amazing, fun designs getting there. But this yeah. this design seemed to work. It fits the arena very very well, um, and it gives that feel. Yeah, so this is essentially the hybrid car, and we can't show this in the video now. But I basically had a tank built, guys. Like I knew bumper cars needed to have railing around them, but the way I built the car, it was just massive. It was probably like four of these things put together. There are some amazing views from up here as well. Yes, there are. So you did, you, you went as far as to build simulated observation decks. Uh, <laughs> it'd be great if they worked. It, it would be absolutely Dude, amazing. Dude, if I could see your eyes through there, like that, that here. Email, you know, with the big eyeballs. There, I'm just. I don't know if that works in Lego. I'm gonna use the macro binoculars <laughs> and, and pretend. Yeah, I was really proud of this build because well for one you know i built the elevator and when it actually worked my brain popped i was like okay so that was the whole reason i was even trying to design an elevator was for this tower right here is what i had in mind well it only works really if you have the elevator so it all started with that you know i got that working and i simply built the elevator shaft up high enough and you know to make the rotating part there were some trials and errors there to be sure but I finally got the thing going around and tracked in a way so where, you know, it didn't hiccup, it didn't bounce around. It was a nice smooth ride all the way around. So you, you definitely have the stationary center section and then what's what's rotating on its own up here is just at this level, this platform. And if that's, that's too it. much, you can go down one level. Oh yeah, all right with you. Catch yeah, the this view. one is totally stationary. Yep. This deck doesn't move or do anything. But you can access this deck two ways, elevator and staircase. Definitely, definitely a neat ride. So from here, you see another unique one over here, kind of in the water. You want to head to that one next? Okay, so yeah, this is an idea we both kind of came up with, I think, overnight on the same night. Is this the one? Yeah, I, yeah it was kind of crazy. Or we one think, of them? <laughs> we think alike sometimes. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, we both woke up that morning and read each other's texts. It was like, you too? Whoa. So anyway, yeah, this drop tower, guys, I have been building, tearing down, and experimenting with the drop towers for weeks. And the hang up I kept having was getting the movable platform to rotate. So I didn't just want a drop tower that went up and down. I wanted things to spin around too. So, you know, the different build concepts I was coming up with had the tires mounted to the movable platform. And it just wasn't working. I couldn't get the, the thing to, you know, circle around the tower. And I actually made a tower that twisted. Kind of like that uh, double helix roller coaster I was showing you that one night. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Same idea, only going up. And it kind of sort of worked, but wow, it was taking damage. And it, it just, you know, the, the whole rotating thing, it wasn't controllable. It rotated with the track, and I didn't like that idea. 
So then, you know, that big light bulb goes off and is like, whoa, wait, what if I put the tires on the build? And Joker, I knew it was going to cause a problem with build limit because it's just a big number of builds with all those tires. But when we ride this thing, I hope you'll, you know, feel like it's worth it. Can play with this all day long you can like kind of do like a legit drop tower where the you know right operator messes with people and he always pushes the button when you don't expect so that's kind of the idea i was going for here might be wondering why I did this over water. One of the bigger issues I was having during the R&D stage was damage. I couldn't find a way to cushion the landing. So I figured out water. Now, you know, it doesn't always prevent all damage, but it makes it workable to where you can actually build the design and, um, you know, not have to worry about wrecking your build every time. But the thing I liked about it was it had the feel that you were dropping. Well, I mean, this we is should... only about half the park. I know. We should probably keep the water theme going. Yeah. Sure. Want to go up river? Let's go up river. So as we fly through, we do have this one little restaurant oh, yeah. area. This is a fun place to observe the raft rides as they come down. That it is. So. One of these days, I'm going to get eight people in here, build eight rafts, and have them all come by like. In, you know, timed. I don't know. We'll figure that out. But yeah, I just kind of want to be able to sit here for a good couple of minutes and watch raft after raft mm -hmm, go by. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, I, I think you know, there's going to be a point in which this opens up. So, I mean. You're, you're still kind of on the same mindset. We want to invite people to be able to come and enjoy some of the stuff in the park, right? Oh, yeah. I think that'll be a lot of fun if we invite some of our subscribers and other people. May, they may have some ideas of some great rides as well. This is truth. So, yeah, this, uh, this entire side of, you know, the theme park to be started with the raft ride. That's the great thing about this ride, is it simulates being launched. It does. There is one side of this raft, and I can never remember which side it is. It's either the one I'm sitting in or the one to my left. But there's one of these rapids that dips down just deep enough, it'll kick the person, whoever's sitting there, out of the chair.
were in the chair. <laughs> yep. Okay, so it was the one to my right. Noted. So at some point, folks, I am going to build a wheeled runner track under the water here so that when the raft, you know, hits this docking point, because normally it's just going to stay here. So in other words, it's going to be in the way of, you know, incoming rafts. So there will be another, you know, track with wheels on here, powered wheels. That way the operator can turn them on. It will, you know, grab hold of the raft from this point and wheel it all the way over to the stopping point here. So folks, we're gonna head back up to the, the bigger lake at the southern edge here. And um, we pretty much have to kind of quit it on this side, unfortunately, you know, because of the build limit, which is okay. You know, this river is long enough for much, much more. But guys, we have plans and I don't know, you know, if it's wise to discuss all that in, in this type of video format, but be rest assured, there's definitely gonna be some rides coming out. Uh, we're definitely cooking up a lot of fun stuff for this lake especially. Right, as the park expands, so do we. I mean, we, you know, the complexity issues that we come across, it Absolutely. it kind of it kind of dictates where we're going to build. And yeah. so this is kind of the next area that we're focusing on here. So we're looking for more ideas. We're scouring the internet looking at different videos of actual real-world rides. Because uh, that's right. that's where we get our inspiration and ideas from. Then we have to actually, go through the fun part in figuring out the mechanics. <laughs> I, actually, I really haven't been on the internet. Um, everything that I've built here has come out of my own nugget until last night. Last night I wanted to do a little research to see, you know, before I started naming stuff, World's First This, World's First That, I was like, you know, I better do some research here and make sure I know what I'm doing. And, you know, I really thought this was going to be the, th the first theme park ever. Sadly, it is not the first theme park ever. Um, you know, I was just floored at, at all the theme park stuff that was out there on YouTube already. So, um, as I was saying earlier, guys, if I do a copycat build of a ride, I will absolutely credit, you know, the builder uh, for build credit and link that person's video to that video when the time comes. I'm definitely looking forward to expanding on this park. We wanted to get a bit a video built, get it put out there, just so you could see. We're hoping, you know, other members of the community may want to, you know, join it up. Uh, potentially, may want to lend a hand. Maybe you have an idea of an excellent build you think would be a great addition to the park. Uh, reach out. We can get together, see where it takes us. The idea is to have fun. Absolutely. That's a good point, man. And, um, you know, I was kind of stewing on that a little bit last night when I saw these other videos popping up, you know, all these different creators out there. If any of you guys are watching this and you're like, oh, I have a ride that would be perfect in that amusement park, uh, reach out. My email's in the description below, uh, leveluproyal at gmail.com. Or, you know, I'm sure Joker Plays has a way to get a hold of him as well on his channel. If you want to take a moment, maybe, and spit that out. Or maybe he doesn't. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Sorry, I'm just. To read. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just amazed they redid one of the emotes that we used a lot uh, oh. during regular Fortnite. Shiny rocks. Yeah. Yeah. What was I even talking about? Oh, oh. so yeah. Please feel free to reach out. Uh, Joker Place has a way to get a hold of him too. That is uh, through YouTube. Go ahead and contact me through my channel. Send me a link. Send me a message. We'll get together. There it is, folks. And uh, you know, if if you want to come in and build it yourself. Um, I think that would be a real fun collab. Uh, that's what that's called, right? Collab? Collaboration video? Yep. Yeah, so that would be a really fun collab video. Uh, you do your recording, I'll do mine. We'll get your ride built. I'll make sure I credit it in the description. Hopefully to get you a little bit more traffic on your channel. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun. It was great to show off kind of a lot of the work that we put into this park. I know we Absolutely. do this kind of... In between other sessions, other recordings that we do, uh, I was building custom maps for a little bit. Uh, so I did release one of the first videos on building your own Lego map as well that is playable through customs. So that's that's going to be a video series that I'm going to be focusing on as well from time to time. 
Um, and then in between all of that, we have fun in our own survival worlds that we we build up and whatnot. Um, that's that's a lot of fun. Don't don't think just because we're here in the sandbox world that we're not uh, working through our survival worlds. I know I'm doing the same. I, I believe uh, Lure is doing the same in his as well. So oh yeah, a lot of stuff Actually, we learn here. Um, <laughs> yeah, well you know I did my my walkthrough of the survival months ago, but you know that was just. A first playthrough. I didn't know anything about the game. I didn't do any research. It was just all experimentation. Oh, check that out. That's what that is, you know, kind of stuff. But it wasn't a good walkthrough to show people how to play the game well. So yes, I will, you know, at some point be doing probably some lives where I just, you know, get into a survival world and start going to town. Yeah, survival is its own unique way, uh, you know, collecting the resources and whatnot. That. That is definitely a fun play. I like doing that. Uh, keeps my mind nice and clear, and then get to have fun doing all other types of things. The creativity really comes in in sandbox mode for me. Right. Uh, gives you the ability to use every piece in the game as well. That's locked out in in the uh, survival mode. So that's yeah. What you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. If you don't mind me touching on that for just a moment, I'm going to go into my build menu. So, for example, what he's talking about, like these foundation pieces. Guys, you don't have these in survival. It's like this 4x4, four four, that's all you get. You get this, this stupid little, you know, 4x4 uh, four four flat block. Okay, great. So if you want to build a tall structure, you know, that, that's adding a lot of builds to your area, and I just hate it. Not only that, it's time-consuming, you know, there's farming involved with that. I don't understand why you can't have, maybe this should be on your top 10 list, you know. Why don't the survival builds match the, the sandbox builds? Not only that, for example, these uh, railings. And I found this out just by, you know, once again, having fun in sandbox. This little 2 by it's awesome. You know, it fills in all your railing. You can make railings fit the way they're supposed to. I, I loved it. And then I go back to survival, and that build's not in there. I'm like, uh-huh, you know, it just kind of made me cry a little on the inside. Yeah, that's the, that's the hard part. There, there are a lot of build series out there on YouTube where people are building their worlds in survival, and, you know, that's great. I know I do a lot of experimenting, like I said, in the sandbox mode uh, with the anticipation of knowing what pieces are and are not available in survival mode. Right. So that's kind of that's kind of what we go through. But yeah, for for complexity purposes, it would be really nice if we could have some of those other pieces in survival mode as well that we have afforded to uh -oh. us in sandbox. I thought I had that creator music turned off. My bad, dude. Hope that doesn't screw your video up. Did you hear it? The emote? No. Well, that was stupid. I had to go into settings and just look at it, and then it stopped again. It was well, doing that to me when I loaded into the game earlier. Yeah, dang, dude. Sorry. If I had known, I wouldn't have done that. No. I I was trying to figure out why music was playing for me earlier when I was going through the item shop. I'm like, uh, I have this turned off. And then I look at settings, and settings says it was turned off. Mm. And then I got out hey. of it, and then it just... it just would didn't play after that it was kind of weird gotcha hey folks before i cut video here i just kind of wanted to say a little blurb on you know this whole debate i see a lot in comments you know sandbox versus survival uh folks play them both um you know we probably touched on this a little bit in our discussions here along the way but um ideas are going to come to you in survival that will not come to you in sandbox and likewise, ideas will come to you in Sandbox that will never come to you in Survival. And the reason is, is because you have a different goal set. So in Survival, that's a very specific goal set. You know, goals are farming, surviving, eating, temperature control, uh, just so much going on in your mind. And so you, your, your build ideas come to you uh, around that goal set. When you jump into, you know, Sandbox here and none of that stuff is a problem, you don't have to farm anything, you know, you can kind of fly around and not worry about you know, just just the nuisancey stuff that comes with the survival. Uh, again, that's a different goal set. So ideas are just going to start coming to you. And the great thing about that is once you do your experimenting in the sandbox and you get a good working unit, 
You can go back to your, you know, survival, put it down. You'll be able to build it quick. You know what you're doing. You know exactly what you need to go for for resources. It's just a lot of fun. So, guys, my best advice, absolutely take the time to master both sides of the game. Yeah, there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, I, there's a video that I have released already. It's my retractable roof video. Um, I actually built that for my survival world specifically so I'd have the retractable roof uh, holding in my my builds because I, I I know everybody's done it they put one too many balloons on their airships <laughs> and it just took off into the air the retractable roof was really really good because it allowed you to keep those builds inside in exactly. case you put one too many balloons type thing and so that worked out really really well for me but I built that in my sandbox first and when I did the tutorial online portion the tutorial portion for that particular building building I, I did that in sandbox as well it allowed me not to have to worry about farming all the materials for being able to do that but at the end of the day the very very large one the one that you see in my video was in my sandbox world my sandbox right. world so that that Perfect one in particular, example yeah, it, of uh, playing both sides of the game. Yeah, it, it definitely allowed me to fine-tune what I did need to do, what did work, what didn't work. Right. So so guys, speaking of you know experimenting, this should give you guys some kind of idea of an idea what, what we're uh, stewing on here. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. I don't want to talk too much about it. But uh, yeah, so you know that sandbox build, tear down, who cares? It's all free. No big deal. Honestly, Joker, I've had so much fun with you recording this video. I kind of don't want to stop. But, you know, I know for brevity and stuff, we should probably go ahead and wrap things up. Right. Yeah, we don't we don't want to talk about what's going on here, because this is kind of an experiment of what may turn into a future build. It is build. an experiment. So, right. I'm sure I'm sure they're catching an idea of what may or may not be going on here with these builds. But no. I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to give it away. So. <laughs> Let's just say it's kind of like that movie that you're watching and that, and that turn or that twist comes to the plot that you weren't expecting. Yep. All right. Well, this has been a lot of fun. I'm really excited yes, to be able has. to show off all the hard work that we put into this Adventureland Park here. Absolutely. We will definitely settle on a name eventually. You know, we don't, we don't want to get into any kind of copyright infringement type situations and we want to make sure we amply name it something unique that is something that uh is unique for us so this is truth so folks uh level up royal here thank you so much for watching the video uh please take a moment to like share subscribe and comment that is always appreciated and until the next time best of luck and happy hunting all right everybody thank you so much for watching this video and making it through with us and as always thanks for gaming with me and until next time Make sure to keep gaming in your crosshairs. Sweet deal, bro.